So it was the Friday before Christmas and all through the gym. No, we're not doing that. We are not doing any poems on the Friday before Christmas because it's time for the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Skyview, our first chance to see the Bobcats tonight as they play host to Weber, a 6A team from Region 1. Skyview's played in a bunch of tournaments. They haven't had a lot of standalone games. They played in a Preston tournament and they played at one down in Southern Utah. They've been a little bit up and down, but Mason Falslev has been up. The guy is averaging 24 points per game. He leads 4A. He's one of the top scorers in the state. For Weber, they started way up, 4-0, and looking good early, but they've lost their last three games, including a shellacking at the hands of a very good American Fork team earlier this week. They've got guys, though, that can get the job done, and one of their best guys is only about 5'9". So, who's going to come out on top tonight in Smithfield? Stick around on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel, and you'll find out. At Ultra, we don't believe in limits, or telling runners they can't, or it's not possible. That's why we dared to make shoes with a foot-shaped toe box, and gave runners zero drop technology so that runners could say goodbye to limits too. Ultra invites you to experience the difference everyone's talking about with zero risk. Love your run or send them back within 30 days, no questions asked. Get your pair today at ultrarunning.com. Ultra, zero limits. Today Where is the beef? means something different. Some use beef frozen from far away. But Wendy's believes the juiciest hamburgers are made from fresh beef, raised right here. Land of the beef, home of the deliciously different Dave's Double. Well, Coach, our first time seeing the Bobcats, we hear all about Mason Falslev, and he scores plenty of points. We know all about him. Tell us about the rest of this team and this pretty tough early season schedule that you've played. Uh, it's been good for us, kind of to see where we're at, see what we need to work on. But uh, got a good cast of seniors. John Bergeson helps us out at point guard. He started a few games coming off the bench right now, but does a really good job. Malik Horman is a good defender, and he's started to find his shot a little bit in the last few games. Cole Smith started starting for us. He started some games for us last year. Uh, Cole DeBoer also started a little bit for us, and those two have kind of traded spots. But Cole DeBoer has got a broken nose again. And it seems like it's about his fifth one and since he's been here at Skyview. But uh, uh, we've got Sam Phipps. He's, he's new to the Bobcats. Uh, so uh, that's that he brings kind of a wrinkle to our team, uh, kind of athleticism. Um, you know, we've had some good uh, good games, tough competition this year, like you mentioned at this point. A good Preston tournament last weekend. We had some good uh, improvement down in St. George. We went down there and played Canyon View Preston, or I mean uh, Pine View and uh, Snow Canyon. So. Uh, I, I felt like we're, we're improving each game, and that's what's going to help us in region for sure. Tell me about uh, this Weber team. They they won four in a row. Now they've lost three in a row. You know, it's that preseason or non-region schedule, I guess, where you're trying to get everything ironed out. But as you look at them on film, what are you expecting tonight? What does your team need to do? Well, American Fork. They played American Fork on Tuesday. Uh, American Fork's super tough they're probably one of the best teams in the state and and i'm in talking with their coach he had three of his four three of his five starters that were out for that game and so he had to play small ball and they were still tied at halftime so uh credit to them i think they're going to be super scrappy they're going to you know they've got the shank kid that's going to shoot it really well um they've got some height the iverson kid that played against us back when we were in that region he's out with the meniscus uh problem right now but i think they're going to be super scrappy i think they're going to shoot it a lot uh you know we're gonna have to play smart offense we're gonna have to value the ball and value possessions tonight and that's something we've been working on with the kids and, and i think we'll be okay all right thanks coach good luck tonight appreciate it thank you Say the word base. Say the word mess. Over the period of time, my hearing became worse and worse. Over the course of the years, I developed a, a hearing loss, and I would not be able to hear my employees talk to me sometimes. For Paul Dings and Cash Valley's integrity, his character, his background, his equipment, 
I would recommend him to anyone for a hearing aid specialist. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cash Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Mountain Star Cash Valley Hospital, together we're greater. Cash Valley Electric, a tradition of excellence since 1915. New Smile Dental, experience dental care. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Lynn's Audio and Video, Cash Valley Specialists. Mountain Valley Heating and Air Conditioning. Give us a call. You'll be glad you did. Herms Inn, last chance for great food. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons Apartments and Townhomes is your home. Planet Fitness of Logan, no intimidation and only 10 bucks a month. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 25 years. Welcome to Skyview High School in Smithfield. We're tonight on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel in a non-region matchup. We see the Warriors of Weber High against the Skyview Bobcats. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Olson, and I'll be with you all night as along with the rest of the season. We're getting into the national anthem here, so I'll just step aside from that. Talented trio of cheerleaders from Skyview singing the national anthem on this Friday night before Christmas, Christmas in a few days. And this is the last basketball game this year for most of these uh, schools. There won't be any next week. They pick up again in the first part of January. Let's talk about the visiting Weber Warriors for a moment. They're four and three. They're out of region one in 6A. They won their first four games. They beat Salem Hills, Box Elder, Logan, and Cypress. But then they run into some injury problems. They've lost their last three games. They lost a, two, uh, a squeaker to Bonneville, a two-point game to Farmington, and then lost most recently on this Tuesday night, 81-65 to to a very good American Fork team, an American Fork team that we're going to see on January 4th against Ridgeline. They're second in 6A and number three in the state. A lot of injury problems have contributed to that four game, that three game skid. They're led by 5'9 senior Hudson Skank. He had 23, 22, and 20 in his first games. And he had nine assists versus Box Elder in one of those first games, averaging 16 points, three rebounds, four assists, two and a half steals. His four assists are sixth and 6A. His steals are fifth in 6A. He had six steals against American Four. They lead Region 1 at 4 and 3. Fremont, Davis, Clearfield, Northridge, Syracuse, and Layton make up Region 1. Max Triplett will be starting at 6 foot 7 for the Weaver Warriors. Logan Lefebvre at 6 feet. Tyler Short, the junior, also at six feet. At 6'6", Quinton Bennett, the sophomore, 
And a Hudson Skank at five, at five foot nine, the senior, number three. The head coach is right they turn the lights out here in Smithfield as he gets set to introduce the Bobcats. And we'll let you watch what they've got in store. Oh, look, that big screen up on the, there we go. They're making it a show more and more, even at the high school level. As they bring out the big screen for Skyview, and we haven't talked about them. We'll talk about them a little bit as we talk about these starters. They start and finish with Mason Falslip at six foot four, 24 points per game. Cole Smith will get the start tonight at 6'1", the senior. Also just a junior, he's the top scorer in 4A. Malik Horman, a senior at six feet tall, averaging seven points per game. Skyview has some size. Jackson Schumann, just a sophomore, at six foot nine. Sam Phipps, who played for Mountain Crest last year, is a junior. Now plays here at Skyview. He's six foot six, averaging 14 points per game. And he's feeling pretty comfortable in this Skyview system. Skyview lost their first two games. They won four in a row. They lost two of their last three. They beat Highland of Idaho 70 to 54 on Tuesday. That's a team they lost to in the first game of the season, 64 to 62. We talk about Falsam and his 24 points per game. He had 35 in the season opener at Highland. That's not even his best game. He had 36 versus Capital in the Preston Indian Classic. Capital, a high school out of Boise, Idaho. So Phipps in the middle against Triplett. And Skyview with the first possession. Falsam handles. Also working one-on-one. -on -one. Kicks it across to Horman. Horman in the lane. Lay it up. Count it. Here's Skank with the ball. It looks like it's pronounced Shank, but it's, the coach has told us no, it's, it's Skank. He's five foot nine. He, he's been impressive this season. Doesn't have the size, but he's got the game. Turnover. Smith brings it across the timeline, uses the FIP screen, then hands it off to Horman. Schumann in the corner, looks at a three. Off the back heel, rebounded out of there by Weaver. Short came up with the board. Baseline move won't go, and the tip back in, or back up, also won't go. And the Bobcats coming back the other way. Here's Phipps, shut off baseline. Looking for some help, and he walked. Skyview's first turnover. And a loud student body tonight. Favor that missed the shot for Weber on the last possession. Tried to 
tap it back in, but Skyview came out with it. The favorite, pull up from the elbow, short, rebounded by Falsley. He drops it inbounds as he falls out of bounds, then picks it back up. Spin to the left, lay it up and in. Four nothing Skyview, we've played two minutes. Down low on a travel. Triplet dragged his pivot foot. Second turnover for the Warriors. Mountain Crest leading, or Mountain Crest, Skyview leading four to nothing. So many high schools. Bounce pass into Schumann, he has a hard time with it. Kicks it back out to Horman, the three too hard as Gank comes out with it. Across the timeline. Right through the hands of his teammate. And out of bounds, turnover number three for the Warriors. Spencer Hall into the ball game for Weaver. False Schumann, three ball, got it. Jackson Schumann at 6-9, firing up the long ball. Skake with the dish to Lefebvre and one. That was triplet. No, that's the favorite, 21. And Falslow picks up the foul. No, that, that's triplet, 12. Three point play by triplet. And off to Phipps, Phipps has it knocked away and taken away. Second turnover for the Bobcats. Skank pulls up for three, leaves it short. Rebound fought for Smith, had his hands on it, it's Orman with it. Orman cross court to Falsa, falls down, gives to Phipps. A lot of contact, no foul. Schumann cleans up the mess. Oh, that was a James Harden step back couple of steps. No call and the three ball won't go. Phipps with a rebound. Foreman takes it from Falson. Spins inside. He walked. Third turnover for Skyview. 9-3. Skyview with the early lead. We're halfway through this first quarter. Skank with the hair flowing high off the glass. Schumann to the board. Skank hits the deck. No call. Smith in the middle to Phipps, who dumps it underneath to Falslip. That one was blocked. Falslip gets the rebound, but it's taken away by Spencer Hall. Weaver in a hurry the other way. Flip up one goal. And here's Phipps for three. Yes. Sam Phipps makes it a nine point lead. 12 to three Skyview. With 310 to play in the quarter. Down low working his way in is triplet. And he's denied. And the Bobcats with a nine point lead and looking to add to it. Under three minutes to play in the quarter. Falson to his left. Tries to drop the pass into Schumann and it's turned over. Fourth turnover for the Bobcats in the quarter. Three on the way for Weber. Off the front of the iron, Tyler Short couldn't get it to fall. And now Phipps trots across the timeline. He has it taken away. Skyview. Careless with the ball, their fifth turnover. Skank hits it the other end. 
12-5 Skyview, 2.20 to play in the first. First quarter, that is. Jackson Schumann with five in the quarter. He's got the ball. Passes off to Horman. Halslip uses the screen, calls for the ball. Pull-up jumper inside the three-point line, too hard. And Skank with the rebound. Skank gives it off to Hall. He drives and misses. Smith with the board. Quickly the other way, Horman. Malik Horman has four. The Bobcats lead 14 to five with 1.46 to play in this first quarter. A frenetic pace. Talking to Coach Ryan Jones of the Weaver Warriors before this game, he expected that they were gonna get up and down. But some of the injury problems that they've had, they've kind of gone away from a little bit from some of the, from some of the set plays. And they've tried to really just get up and down as much as they can because they're playing small ball. Jace Wright's going to check in, number 24 for the Bobcats. Fourteen to five with 146 to play in the first period. Skyview with the lead, a Weaver with the ball. Hudson Skank across the timeline with it. He breaks the paint, leaves it back off for his teammate who lays it up short. Triplets having trouble tonight. There's a couple of times he's been in close, but they call a foul on the rebound. Foul on Skyview's 24, Chase Wright gets first. Right comes into the game and immediately picks up a foul. Triplet at the line. Three, Triplets two. one for one from the free throw line. He shot the only free throw of the night for either team. Triplet now with four. Triplets three for three from the line here in the quarter. He's got five points. And it's a seven point Skyview lead. Right, fires away, it's short, Triplet rebounded rebound. by Triplett. Maximus Triplett. That sounds like a hamburger. The Maximus Triplett with large fries. Now you gotta be 6'7 if your name's Maximus. He's a big kid. Skank pulls up and hits. Skank for three. Hudson Skank with his First three-pointer. He's got five points in the quarter. It's 14 to 10. Weber hanging in there. Also plays catch with Bergeson. Free throw line jumper is good by Wright. The three at the other end is good. Worrell into the ball game. Firing up to three. And it's a three point ball game. It's 16 13. Skyview ran out to the early nine point lead. Weber's chipped away, and it's a three point lead with 15 seconds to play in the quarter. Also between the circles. Six seconds. And what did they call? Offensive foul. On Phipps. Wow. Three team fouls on Skyview. Weber yet to get an infraction. Six seconds. Plenty of time for a shot. Skank pulls up straight away. Ties it up. That's the end of the first quarter. We're all knotted up at 16 in Skyview. Back with more after this.
You're so adorable. I'm taking you home. The world judges. We don't. Planet Fitness. Be free. Skyview jumped down to an early nine point lead. But then in the last couple of minutes of that quarter, they ended up being outscored. Let's see, they ended up being outscored 13 to four. And we're all knotted up at 16 apiece. Eric Colson along with you here at the farthest north high school in Utah. A little piece of high school trivia for you there. Put it in your back pocket, whip it out at parties, amaze your friends, confound your enemies. Skank with eight points in that first quarter, including the three that tied things up right at the buzzer, just before the buzzer, and a foul out front. Bergeson picks up his first. And Skyby with their fourth team foul. Skank throws it inbounds. A haul, and now they go down low. And Weber with their first lead of the ball game. Eighteen to sixteen, Weber. Phipps, back to Horman in the corner for three. The short, rippled the net but didn't go through the rim. Oh, that's a double dribble. Weaver misses the shot, gets the ball back. The player picked up the ball with two hands, put it on the floor, picked it up, put it on the floor again. That's what Trey Worrell did a moment ago. I don't know if you could hear the student body hollering for it. No harm done, though, as the shot's missed, and Skyview's got it back. Baseline jumper rattles in for Malik Horman. Horman's got six. Skank thinks about a three and an offensive foul. First foul on Weber. Calling on 15, we do not have a 15 on the. We don't have a 15 on the uh, roster. I don't know if there's a 15 out there. There's 12. Foul is on Spencer Hall, his first. Okay, Spencer Hall, 35. It's his first. Falslip with seven points. Tied at 18, six and a half to play in the half. Falslip tries the right, goes to his left. Out to right, who dishes it under to Schumann. He's fouled hard. Schumann and Spencer Hall good. just picked up his second. Foul is on Hall, his second. Second Schumann team foul for Weber. Schumann had five points in the first period. A three pointer and one in close. And this is the first free throw for the Bobcats. Weber's three for three from the line. Hall sits. The favor back in there. Schumann hits them both, and the Bobcats back out to a two point lead. Favor and Morrell play catch. Skank had a look, he decides not to take it. Skank's got a man down low. He tosses over Wright's defense, Wright slots it away, and they call the foul immediately. Foul on Skank 24, Wright. Jace Wright picks up his second. That's the 15 foul on Skyview. Free throw up and in for Bennett. Nielsen checking in for Weaver, replacing Triplett. Bennett 
misses the second. 6'6 six, six, sophomore. Ball slip into the lane. Kicks it out to Wright. Wright's got Schumann. He loses it as he goes to dish it to Schumann. But Smith gets it back, and his baseline floater won't go. Rebounded by Bennett. Pull up three on the way. Too hard. Schumann fights for the board, and Wright's got it. Rebound controlled by Bergeson. Bergeson gets a hold of it. Settles everything down. Back to Schumann off the pick and roll. Schumann. Nine points for Schumann. The big sophomore. 22-19 Skyview. Worrell fires up a three. This one wide left and rebounded easily by Falslip. Five minutes to play in the half. Skyview by three. Falslip to the rack. Up, under, in, and one. Also, earlier I said he had seven, he only had two. That's only his second bucket. He's got four Falls points on the, on the line for one more. It's been Jackson Shank, the 6'9 sophomore. He's got nine points, he and Horman with six. False of misses. 24-19 Skyview. We were tied at the break at 16 apiece. They work on Schumann who holds his ground. And Falsam all the way to the rim. Leaves it short. They tie it up on the rebound. It looks like Schumann's going to be called for the foul. Foul's on his guy is 32, Schumann. That's his first. That's the sixth team foul. Free throws the rest of the way for Weaver. Checking in for Weaver, number 12. That's actually Schumann's second. got him for one. The big board's got him for two. The big board's the official one. Nielsen dishes it off through the hands of Triplett. He gets it back to Skank. Skank uses the screen. Back to Triplett. Tapped away momentarily by the Bobcats. And Skank gets it back. Uses the screen from Triplett who rolls out and fires the three and a pick and pop. It's no good and rebounded. And false live with it. Foreman in the left corner hands it back to Smith. Smith from the left side and it's swatted out of bounds. Bennett with the block, Bobcat basketball. Bennett swats it away. Spencer Swartzen. Sorensen into the game. Or Skyview, Phipps drops the inbound pass and a foul called on Max Triplett. Foul is on Weavers, 12, Triplett is first. That's his first, fourth team foul on the Warriors. Bounces it in to Falsliff. Falsliff down the lane with a little hook. Falsliff now with six. Three and a half to play in the first half. A seven point lead for the Bobcats. They've outscored Weber 10 to three to start this second period. Here's a near steal and it's still up for grabs. It ends up being a turnover for Weber. They're first in a bit and they're fourth in the first half. Both teams were throwing the ball around like it was hot earlier. Since then, they've settled down and taken better care of it. Too high. And the hand off to Horman. Looks for the dish, decides to take the shot. Triplet blocks it out of bounds. False will trigger in. Phipps has been quiet. He averages 14 a game. He's got three. 
Here's a long three that won't go, rebounded by Smith. Smith. He tried to lob that one up there. It wasn't caught by Sorensen and a rebound foul and another foul on Weaver. Fouls on Weaver's number 40. Bennett is first. Quentin Bennett picks up his first. Timeout Skyview. Checking in for Weaver, number 35, Hall. Spencer Hall will check in as we come back from the timeout. Skyview leads 26-19. There's 2.41 to play in this first half. Skyview had a nine-point lead early in the first period. Weaver kept whittling away at it. And Hudson Skank hit a three-pointer at the first quarter buzzer to tie it up at 16, going into the second. But they've outscored, and Skyview has outscored Weaver 10-3 here in this second period so far. Only three points for the Warriors. And there's 2.41 left to play here in the half. Skyview's played five games versus Idaho teams. They played Highland twice out of Pocatello, lost 1-1-1. Beat Capital out of Boise, lost to Preston, lost to Rocky Mountain as a team out of Boise. Three by Smith is short. Skank, nice little bounce pass underneath. His teammate can't finish, Sorensen with the board. Here's Phipps, back out to Falsliff. Cross court to Horman. Straight away three for Smith, leaves it short. He's got two steps behind the arc. One step and it would have been in. Two minutes to play in the first half. 26-19 Skyview. The Fever to Bennett. Triplett hands it back to Skank and Skank backs out and calls the play. Jumper from the elbow won't go. Here's Falsliff. Lob to Falsliff. He tries to throw down with one hand. But Skank is there to interrupt things. Skank was going to step into a three. Gives it back to Lefebvre in the corner. He's got it. Lefebvre with his first bucket. He averages nine points a game. It's 26-22 Skyview. Approaching one minute to play in this first half. Smith passed up the three. He's at the elbow, finds Horman. Horman, little floater won't go. Schumann, too hard. And a rebound foul. Looks like it's gonna go on Triplett. Triplett will pick up his second. Fouls on Weavers, number 35, Hall. His nope, third. they're gonna give it to Hall. And Hall picks up his third. Cole Smith sits, Jonathan Bergeson into the game. Worrell in and haul out for Weaver. Bergeson gets it right back in to Falslip. Falslip, a little one hand push. Falslip has eight. 45 seconds to play in the half. 28 22 Skyview. Triplet firing the three. He's got it. Triplet, the three. Ten points for Triplet. Twenty-eight, twenty-five. Skyview leading. Twenty seconds to play, and Phipps drops it. They tried to feed him. It was a little behind him. Also tries to steal. Phipps comes up with it. Boy, Weaver got back in a hurry. They were all in the front court. They get back in a hurry. Phipps misses. Falsliff rebound miss. Falsliff will go to the line. Falsliff and Phipps were both trying to dig that ball away in midcourt because they could smell a dunk. <laughs> That's a couple of guys that can throw down. Falsliff looking for double figures. 
He had two in the first quarter. He misses his second free throw of the quarter. He's 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Hits the second. He's got nine. And he makes a steal and throws down! Cookies for Falsliff, and then he jams him back in the jar. That's the last play of the first half. Falsliff puts an exclamation point on it with the steal and the throwdown. 31-25, Skyview as we head to the locker room. starting to lose our hearing? Is it genetic? Is it environmental? What, what's happening to us? There's many things. Genetics can take a part of it. Uh, certain medications, ototoxic drugs, uh, but most of it's just life, living, living in general. We go to a concert here, we go to a, a motorcycle rally, we ride a motorcycle, we're exposed to all these loud sounds, loud music, but it all takes a little bit of hearing. A little bit here, a little bit there, we don't notice it. It's so slowly happening and it's painless and over time just that little bit compounds and pretty soon we have a significant hearing loss that's affecting our ability to communicate with our loved ones. If you are experiencing any kind of problem, be you my age or be you younger, why don't you give Dr. Danes a call here at Cache Valley Hearing. Tell us where we are, Dr. Danes, and how they can get hold of you. We're at 485 North Main Street in Logan, uh, and you can just give us a call at 435-753-4327. We're at 753-H-E-A-R here. That's a good, <laughs> that's very apt. Yeah, I should say so. Uh, any kind of hearing loss, and literally, please don't let this um, feeling of embarrassment or it not being manly or cool, that's, you know, that's a bit dim. Y you shouldn't be embarrassed about something that is a natural aging process. It's actually more noticeable when you don't hear and have to have that's people to repeat themselves. That's true, and extremely irritating for those around you that are having to repeat it time and time again. Thanks so much, Dr. Danes. And seriously, guys, give Dr. Danes a call. Your hearing problems will be solved. Thanks, Dr. Danes. furnaces do a pretty good job. They're tucked away, out of sight, out of mind. We don't usually think too much about them. They don't need much. They quietly do their job. A typical high quality furnace today is rated to provide you with 10 to 15 years of reliable service. But no matter how good they are to begin with, they just don't last forever. It's their job to heat up and cool down, heat up and cool down again hour after hour, day after day for years. They constantly expand and contract, expand and contract. Eventually the metal is weakened and then it's time to quit. But the question is, when? If your furnace is getting up there in years, you may want to schedule an inspection. Now, of course, nobody wants to replace a perfectly good furnace. We all want to get as much life out of them as we can. On the other hand, isn't it always better to know if you're about to be literally left out in the cold? Most problems arise when you're not expecting them. Chances are your furnace might decide it's time to quit at the most inconvenient time possible. However, Mountain Valley Heating and Air Conditioning offers 24-7 emergency services. Just call the number on your screen, they'll rush their highly trained and factory qualified technicians to you. They'll analyze the problem and determine if what you need is a simple fix or a complete install. Mountain Valley Heating and Air Conditioning is a family-owned local company. They've been serving Cache Valley homes and businesses for over 20 years with dependable residential and commercial heating and air conditioning services. They'll also help you with your gas fireplaces, 
heat pumps and water heaters. They're fast and they're reliable. Their customer satisfaction ratings are very high. They'll do simple repairs, replacements, new construction and commercial applications. They're courteous and professional, bonded and insured and up to date on the very latest technology. They'll troubleshoot the problem and quote you a flat rate price before starting any project. They'll service and repair all brands of furnaces, heaters and air conditioners. If it's a replacement that you end up needing, they carry only the top lines like Lennox, Tempstar and Grand Air and they may maintain a large inventory of replacement parts to keep service times to a minimum and of course all repairs are guaranteed. Don't forget to ask about financing, special discounts for seniors and veterans and special online promotions. So give them a call, you and your furnace will be glad you did. sports and I've always participated in sports and I've always played and I think the best part about this job is being able to watch these athletes play and it's part of my job just to sit there and, and watch these athletes succeed and play these um, wonderful sports. I always knew I wanted to work in medicine and after playing many sports in high school and getting many injuries and having to come back from those injuries I knew that I wanted to provide that same coverage and provide that same care to other student athletes because sports is a key part of growing up. So I teach one class and it's my exercise science sports medicine class and it also gives the students some college credit but mostly it gives me another setting to be with my athletes and I can really get to know them off the field and I can get to know their personalities that way when an injury does happen on the field that I can um, better, better take care of them because they know me and they recognize me. You keep people on the court and you keep them on the field and they're always playing and I always wanted to be a part of that. I always wanted to be part of the team and I always wanted to just participate and make sure that everybody who is um, healthy can stay out there playing a lot longer. So you never want to see anybody actually get hurt but when they when they it does happen it's always good to be there because then we can evaluate to see if it's actually going to be a game changer for them and most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's just an injury and then we can actually get them back into play a lot quicker had they just gotten hurt and sat out. And that's what's um, most important about having us athletic trainers there is that we can really work on these injuries and get them out a lot faster had they just sat out. Um, Cash Valley Hospital is a great company to work for. Um, they provide so much support for their athletic trainers that it just makes working with these athletes such a breeze. If we ever have any questions, concerns about a certain athlete, we can just call on our support and the hospital is very, very generous to us here at the school and it's just a great company and they help the community and they care about these athletes as much as we do and they don't see them every day but they still care about them and that makes it such a different dynamic to work with. My job is to prevent injuries from happening but to also get the athletes back out on the field as quickly as possible after one happens and that's what Cash Valley Hospital is all about. I'm excited for those opportunities because it's a chance for me to get better. It all kind of started when I was younger. My dad uh, founded the Titans Youth Foundation. We didn't want to put athletics above of family and above values. You know, when we were young, we started participating in food drives, helping out in the community. It makes us strive to do 
more things. I usually go to Nolan and ask for help, and he'll usually say, yeah, sure, I'll try to help, but I don't really get it that much either, and then he flawlessly explains it. <laughs> 4.0 and varsity athlete, you can't really beat that. <laughs> <laughs> No one's so exceptional because he's doing things that he loves doing. He works very, very hard. The stuff he's done with the food bank here, the stuff he's done in Liberia, the Mr. Union contest last year. Now the little babies in the neonatal unit have a heart monitor for every baby because of him and the other guys in the Mr. Union. Well, you, you've got to go out there and you've got to take risk. The roles that I've um, played a part in demand leadership and it's being constructive with others, it's learning from others. You know, he just, he just has a great work ethic and, and you know, he's a good teammate too. So the kids respect him and they like him for everything that he's done academically, athletically, and all of his student work outside of school. I want to give every single thing that I have to my team and to know that win or lose, I did everything I could to help make it possible. Every time the bar gets raised, it's, it's, it's time to go higher. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I feel like that's a testament to me. I'm not the most talented, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the strongest. If I do everything that I can in my will every single day, to give everything I have and take chances when necessary, that's where greatness occurs. Day 568 of our journey into America's freezers. We've found ourselves at a location which we're told has frozen beef, but we need to dig deeper. Is the beef currently frozen? Yeah, it's frozen. Would it be possible to actually go in the freezer and get those frozen discs right out of the ice? Oh, we already did that all this morning. Might it be possible to have it on a stick, like a popsicle? No? All right, fair enough. With every restaurant, I feel we grow a little bit closer to actually getting in the freezer. Don't settle for frozen. Swing by Wendy's and try a Dave's Double to see how fresh, fresh beef tastes. And now, great offers are available in the Wendy's mobile app. Download, sign up, and check your account to start redeeming today. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Mountain Star Cache Valley Hospital. Together, we're greater. Cash Valley Electric, a tradition of excellence since 1915. New Smile Dental, experience dental care. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Lynn's Audio and Video, Cash Valley Specialists. Mountain Valley Heating and Air Conditioning, give us a call, you'll be glad you did. Herms Inn, last chance for great food. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons Apartments and Townhomes is your home. Planet Fitness of Logan, no intimidation and only 10 bucks a month. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 25 years. Well, we were tied at 16 after the first period. And in the second period, Skyview outscored Weber 15 to nine, an exclamation point put on the first half by Mason Falslip with the steal and the one hand dunk as time ran out. Falslip leads all scores with 11. He scored nine of those 11 in the second half. He scored all nine of those in the second half of the second period what I'm trying to say. Nine points for Schumann. Six for Horman, three for Phipps. Chase Wright with two. For Weber, Max Triplett with 10. Eight for Hudson Skank. Logan Lefebvre with three. One point for Bennett and three points for Worrell. What's keeping Weber in this ball game? Five three-pointers, five triples for the Warriors. They're launching and a lot of them are hitting the net. They're not two for a dollar tonight, they're three for a dollar. It's a big sale going on around the arc for Weaver. Skyview with the 31-25 lead in the ball to start the second half. Horman, three, short, rebounded by Phipps. Phipps throws it back in as he hits the deck. Seventh turnover for Skyview. Three at the other end. 
They might five, couldn't make it six. Here's Horman, off to Phipps. Phipps spins to his right. No, they're gonna say he walked. It looked pretty good to me. He may have walked before he started into the turn. Because that spin looked pretty clean, but if he may have taken extra steps before he, as he picked up the ball going into the turn. There's a turnover for Weber at the other end. They're sixth. Falsliff, he was just wrecking shop in the second quarter. See what he does here in the third. Having 24 a game, he's got 11. Pulls up for three, won't go. Schumann taps it out to Smith. Smith into the lane, he's got his first bucket. Eight point lead now for Skyview. Six and a half to play. Three pointer by Skank, got it. Hudson Skank with 11. His third three pointer. The Faber's ninth in 6A in three pointers made per game just under two and a half as they come out to double falsely. Phipps hands it off to Horman. And Schumann hit one of those earlier. He's got another one. Schumann's got 12. That's the third three-pointer of the game for Skyview. Skank gets fouled as he breaks the paint. Who's it on? Sam Phipps picks up foul number two. 36-28, Skyview, six minutes to play. They got a foul on the inbounds. Six minutes to play in the third. Foreman picks up his first. Skyview, just like that, two team fouls. Boy, that ball just kind of thrown out there. And then Skyview turns it right back over. They're ninth. Skank in the paint, nowhere to go. Falsliff takes it away. Falsliff with the Euro step. Finger roll won't go. Phipps with the follow, but they call the foul. Falsliff is fouled. Fouls on the Reapers, number 40, Bennett. Quentin Bennett picks up his second. Also will go to the line. Also has had trouble at the line. He's one for three. I think that's part of why he had his throwdown at the end of the half was so vicious. He had just missed one of two free throws and he wasn't happy and he misses that one. Hall will come in for Bennett for the Warriors. Also one of two, he's got 12 points. Nine point Skyview lead. Pull up jumper is good by Spencer Hall, his first bucket. Weaver stays within striking distance, fall slip. Free throw line, Jay. 14 for fall slip. Hall taken away by Falsliff. Falsliff was one man defense. Oh, he throws the lob too tall for Phipps. Phipps comes out, makes Skank pick up the dribble. Now they look down low, triplet going to work on Schumann, and a foul called. by the out front official. Schumann picks up his third. Triplets three for three from the free throw line. He's got 11 points. 
And now he's four for four. Schumann comes out. The second free throw is taken off the rim by Phipps. Schumann comes out, Sorensen comes in, Sorensen at 6'5". Schumann at 6'9". So Skyview giving up a little height. Sorensen in the short corner and a rebound foul on Sorensen. Misses the shot and then compounds it with a foul. That's four team fouls on Skyview. It's the first for Sorensen. 39-31, Bobcats. Step back, jumpers too hard. Phipps comes up with the board. Short with that step back. And under four minutes to play in the third quarter, Phipps tries to make it a double-digit lead, but it rims out on it. To the rim, high off the glass. Short, oh, that's Lefebvre. Lefebvre's got five. Phipps in the lane, trips and falls, 3.32 to play in the third. It's a 39-33 Skyview Lefebvre, lead. Lefever picks up his third foul on that trip. Skyview triggers in, falls slip with it. Falls slip with 14. Lead all scores. An elbow jumper. Rims out again for Phipps. Skank, elbow jumper of his own. Foreman may have gotten a piece of it. The Skyview rebounds it and they step out of bounds with it. Tenth turnover for the Bobcats. The Fever. Sits with his three fouls. Alec Nielsen replaces him. Spencer Hall turns and misses. Here comes Falsa. Left side. Finger roll won't go. Rebound, Weaver. In the corner, Skank. Kicks it back out front. The Hall back to Skank. He looks down low. That's going to be Sorensen's second. Triplet was working on him. Skyview just can't quite put Weber away. Also will come take a seat as Bergeson comes in for him. They're going to probably rest Falsa the rest of this quarter if they can, keep him fresh for the fourth. They may need him down the stretch because Weber's hanging in there down by six. Two and a half to play in the third. Weaver with the ball. Skank, long three. Long go, Phipps with the board. They try to foul him, that Euro foul, trying to stop the break. Foul is on Shank, his first. Skink picks up his first. Bergeson to Phipps, Phipps in the lane, elevates, scores. Sam Phipps with only three points, now he's got five, he averages 14 a game. And with Falsav on the bench, he pretty much becomes their main scoring option. Falsav just taking a breather. Oh, Bergeson reaches in and fouls. Tyler Short didn't have anywhere to go. And Bergeson reaches in and slaps him right across the arm. You can hear it all the way up here. Bergeson has two fouls. Short with his first point and his first free throw. 
Smith sits right, replaces. Phipps right, Warman and Bergeson for Skyview. Short hits them both. Back to a six point Skyview lead, 41-35. 145 to play in the third. Weber in the zone. Here's a steal on the cross court pass. Skyview, an 11th turnover. Turn, shoot, score. That's Max Triplett. Triplett's got 13. And it's a four point. Skyview lead. Approaching one minute to play in the third quarter. Skyview feeds it into Phipps. He takes a step, a dribble, misses, rebound, puts it in. Phipps now with seven. One minute to play in the third. 43-37 Bobcats. Orman knocks it down, but Skank comes and gets it. Skank breaking down Smith. Tries to kick it out. Phipps gets a hold of it. Phipps to the rim. Finger roll won't go. And a foul before the shot. Fouls on Weaver's 35. Hall is fourth. Spencer Hall picks up his fourth foul. Sorensen Sid Schumann back in the game with 40 seconds left. In the third quarter, Skyview 43-37. Bergeson looking for somebody, throws it way out front to Horman. Phipps in the corner, his three is blocked. Weaver got a piece of it. Twenty seconds to play in the third. Skyview by six. Hudson Skank with 11 and the ball. Uses the screen, wide open look at a three and he's got it. Hudson Skank with his fourth three pointer. 43-40 is Bergeson at the buzzer. Leaves it short, 43-40. Skyview takes a three point lead. Into the fourth. Guys, Valley. This is Fernando over the factory at Pizzeria. We're running a special right now. We're giving a free nachos when you buy a large pizza with three toppings. Just mention this up and you're gonna get a free nachos every time you come. The factory at Pizzeria is located in 119 Salt Main, below the GS in the basement. Come see you as soon as you can. Thank you. tell me something and I'd say huh and then they tell me again and I'd say huh and they'd say never mind and so I called and made an appointment say the word pass. he's a PhD and I know what it takes to get a PhD say the word red it was like night and day and then the hearing test was the, the thing that I thought wow he, he really knows what he's doing I would recommend Dr. Danes to anybody everybody Do you need some help crossing the street? <gasps> the world judges. We don't. Planet Fitness. Be free. Well, Hudson Skank hits his fourth three-pointer of the game late in the third. 
to bring Weber to within three points at the end of three, 43-40. Weber's hit seven three-pointers in this ball game. Skyview with three. The, the long ball is keeping Weber in this. It's the same thing that happened when they played American Fork. They're down a couple of players because of injury. They were down three players because of injury against American Fork. One of the, again, the number two team in 6A, I think the number three or four team in all divisions in Utah. They hung with American Fork for most of that game, and then American Fork ended up pulling away and winning 81 to 65. But they're within three as we start the fourth quarter. False lives off the bench and back in there. He's got 14 points. Phipps has seven. Schumann's got 12 for the Bobcats. He's been kind of the surprise. Oh, nice move by Skank. And then he hands it off to his teammate who turns it over. 11th turnover for Weber. We're knotted up in the turnover department. See if Falsam tries to take this fourth quarter over. Phipps has kind of found his groove. Right intercepted the pass and kicks it back out to Bergeson, whose three won't go. Triplet with the board. That pass was for Phipps and Wright cut down the lane and took it away from him. Short back out to Bennett. Bennett hands it off to Skank. Bennett at the elbow. Gives it to Short. Short up under the basket. He's kind of losing his balance. He's kind of to throw it up at the rim or else he was going to walk with it. Phipps going the other way. Phipps leaves it short. Triplet with the rebound. Triplet with the board. Falsev knocks it away, but it's picked up by Nielsen. Nielsen down low to Triplet, and he's fouled by Schumann. That's his fourth. Foul is on Skyview's 32. Jackson Schumann is fourth. Triplet the line shooting two. Coach Hilliard doesn't waste any time. He's going to bring Horman back in. I'm sure Schumann will sit. Triplet for Weaver, number 21. Triplet with 14 to lead Short. Weaver. He and Skank both with 14. Triplet, the second. Triplet hits them both. He's six of seven from the line is triplet. It's a one point game, 43-42. Skyview with the lead and the ball. Bergerson steps inside the three point line. Miss rebounded by Falsliff. He tries to hook it back under, won't go, and then he goes after the rebound and fouls Skank. It's free throws the rest of the way for Weber. Falsliff, I've got that as his second. On the big board, they've got him for three. So he needs to be careful. Eighth team foul on Skyview. Weber's enjoyed a third quarter without as many fouls. They have four. And Skank with a chance to get Weber the lead. Ties it up with that one. 15 for Hudson Skank. <laughs> 16 for Skank. And it's a 4 0 run to start this fourth quarter, all at the free throw line by Weber, and they lead 44 43. False the step back three, rims out. Schumann fights for the board. False live again from the angle. Got it. False live with 17. Now he's got to be careful defensively. He's got three fouls. Underneath triplet flushes. 17 for triplet. False live kicks out to Horman. Three ball. Got it. Horman with his first bucket of the second half. He's got nine. It's a three-point Skyview lead. 
49-46, approaching five minutes to play. Wright goes for the steal and they call the foul. If they call this on Falslove, that's four. They call it on Wright, his third. And Skink will go to the free throw line where he's two for two tonight. Hits the first. Skank's been impressive. He's 5'9", he averages 16 a game. You look at his line, he averages 16, 3, 4, and 2. He's 6th in 6A in assists at 4 a game. He's 5th in 6A at steals, just over 2 a game. He, handle, he has good handles. Runs the offense well, and it's a 49-48 Skyview lead with five minutes to play in this ball game. Skank and Triplett with 17 apiece. Schumann fouled. Schumann. And he'll go to the line. Fouls on Weaver's number 12, Triplett. Triplett is third. Triplett, Lefebvre Schumann with three. Hall with four for Weaver. Falsif and Wright with three for Skyview. Schumann with four. Schumann misses. Schumann's got 12. He averages six a game. He's doubled up his average. He misses both. Rebounded by Falslove, though. One point, Skyview lead. Under five minutes to play in the game. Falslove spin to the left. Left hand scoop won't go. Skank off the triplet pass, hits the deck and a foul call. Oh boy. He was out of control, tried to split a couple of players and there was contact. I think he just kind of fell down. Foul is on number two. John Ferguson, his third. Ferguson picks up his third. Shank at the line. And Shank is four for four, all in the fourth quarter here. He's got 17 points. He and Triplett and Falsliff tied with game high honors. Now he's got 18. Phipps, Phipps back in, Wright sits down. Skink had 23, 22, and 20 in the first three games of the season. He's been in the high teens since. Misses the second, rebounded by Schumann. Schumann with the rebound. We're tied at 49. Skyview's led by as many as nine. Weber's hanging in there. Thanks in part to 12 turnovers. That was number 12 by Skyview. Skank, ooh, he has four free, four three-pointers. Weber as a team has seven. Gank against Falsliff who swats it away. Horman keeps it inbounds. Falsliff, pull up three. Dunk back in by Schumann. Nobody blocked out the big sophomore and he rumbled down the lane and dunked the miss. The Bobcats have a 51-49 lead with 4.07 to play in this ball game. It's been a good one here at Skyview. This is our Christmas present to you. We hope you enjoy high school sports on the Valley Channel. Three decades of high school sports on the Valley Channel. Everybody's doing it now, we were doing it first. fun doing these games, going to these schools. I'm seeing kids, you know, I was doing radio before doing this. I actually played in the first game the Valley Channel ever did. And now here I am calling games, watching these young athletes and just being amazed by, by what they do. Now five high schools so that every game on the Valley Channel, almost every game, is a rivalry game.
Seven three-pointers by the Warriors has kept them on par with Skyview. They trail by two. Hudson Skank's got 18 points. He's got the ball. Skank directing traffic. Hands it off to Lefebvre, who's been quiet. In the lane, tries to tie it up, it's short. Rebounded out of there by Falsa. Falsa on the run. Skank fouls him way out in three-point country. Smart foul. Because that stops the break. And that's only the sixth team foul on Weber. Uh, he grabbed him way out before the three-point line. He was trying to foul him and grab him, and now Coach Hilliard gets a technical, and I'm not sure what he was arguing about. It. There was something maybe I didn't see that I didn't see that was going on. Skank was trying to foul him all the way down court, and he finally blew the whistle when he was between the circles. It was so loud in here you couldn't hear it. And I think Skyview thinks that also should be shooting free throws. Instead, Skank's got a chance to tie it off the Hilliard technical. Six points in this quarter by Skank, all from the free throw line. And misses the second. Ten free throws here in this fourth quarter for Weber. Three, five, they had nine the entire game before this, and they're eight of 10 here in the fourth. Skyview's 0 for two from the line in the fourth. So a chance for Weber to take the lead with under three and a half to play in the game. Near steal by Falsa. Boy, he read it, but he couldn't handle the ball. Three on the way, rims out, fits up high for the board as Nielsen had a good look. It hit every part of the rim, but never touched any twine. Falsa walks it across the timeline as we're closing in on three minutes. Falsa begins skank. He's going to hand it off to Horman. Horman down low to Schumann. Schumann fumbles, loses. Schumann turns it over, the 13th for the Bobcats. Another three, this one too hard. Nielsen again, and now Schenk with the rebound, or uh, rebound down the shot, and a foul on the rebound. And it's gonna be free throws. Who's it on? They never came to the scorer's table to say, here he comes now. Officials trying to find who it was. I think it might have been on LeFaber. The officials are gonna talk about it. There was a foul. That was called and I'm not sure they caught the number. Foul is on triplet, it's third. It's on triplet. Checking in for Weaver. Worrell. Worrell. Short. We'll replace Next Short. Schumann at the line. Schumann the and Schumann at the line, one and one. Skyview with a one point lead, 244 on the clock. Schumann misses. Oh, and Falsa picks up number four. Not smart. Falsa is so aggressive. And you don't want to take that aggression out of a player, but. So many times you're going to get whistled for that foul if you come running up behind somebody and reach in there and try to steal that away. For every time you don't get it called, you're going to, they're going to call it more than half of the time. More free throws for Weaver as the favors. First one rims out. This is 12 free throws in the fourth quarter for Weaver. There's still 2.43 to play. They had nine in the whole first half. Skyview's got nine for the game. Yeah. Faber knocks the second one down. We're tied at 51. And 
Coach Hilliard wants a timeout. 2.39 to play in this ball game as Lefebvre is at six points. Right just below his average. He averages nine a game. Shank's done the job for, Skank has done the job for Weber with 19 points. Triplet, Maximus Triplet has helped him out with 17. Six for Lefebvre, Short with two, Bennett with only one, Spencer Hall with two, and Laurel with three. Ball slip with 17 for the Bobcats. Only six here in the second half. Horman's got nine. Schumann's got 14. Phipps with only seven, he's half his average. Smith with two and Wright with two. So the Bobcats with the ball, we're tied at 51. Fouls are an issue. Both teams in the bonus, Skyview in the double bonus. Schumann's got four, Falslip's got four. Falls of underneath, Schumann fouled hard as he goes in for the bucket. And for Schumann, he's missed his last three free throws. Spencer Hall just fouled out. He finishes with two points. Ryan Jones doesn't take the entire minute. He sends Alec Nielsen right into the ballgame. Schumann's 0 for his last three. He's 2 of 5 from the line. Pressure free throws for the sophomore, and he calmly sinks the first. 15 points for the 6'9 youngster. Misses the second, rebounds free. Falslip gets on the floor, he can't come up with it. Phipps is on the floor, as is one of the Warriors. The possession arrow favors Skyview. If they call a jump, it's Skyview ball. <laughs> they stop play, what else would they call? And that's what they call. Bobcats basketball. So Falslip reached in and knocked the Rebound free off the missed free throw. Phipps jumped in and tied it up. And Skyview just about turns over the inbounds pass. They do turn it over. Schumann was holding the ball out there looking somewhere else and the defender knocked it away. Nielsen off his foot, out of bounds, turnover. 14 turnovers for Skyview, 12 for Weaver. So both teams Struggling with the cowhide globe. Two minutes to play in the ball game. Skyview 52-51. False the Horman. Phipps. Phipps walked. Oh no, they call it offensive foul. My goodness. That's his third. They could call him for the push off. I thought maybe they got him for shuffling. Oh, that's a double dribble, too. <laughs> Logan Lefebvre wants to take the shot, turns and realizes he's got defense in his face, and he drops the ball, hoping that the officials will think it got knocked away. And he picked it back up. They called him for the double dribble. They got him. 140 to play, Skyview by one. Let's see if they just try to burn some clock. He got the number one scorer in 4A with the ball. Kicks it out to Smith. You got a lead, you don't need a shot. 6'9 man takes a three and misses everything. False slip. Tries to bounce it off of Skank out of bounds and instead it rolls right inbounds to Lefebvre. Lefebvre. Lines Nielsen back to Skank. 52-51, Skyview. Skank throws it away. Phipps lets it go. 14th turnover for Weber. Weber with three straight turnovers. 
Scotty doesn't need to take a shot. And Coach Hilliard's going to talk about it. Making, making four corners this thing and force Weber into foul. If you're Weber, that might not be too bad of an option. Falslip, for all his scoring prowess, has struggled a little bit at the line tonight. He's two of five. So Skyview on the night, 12 free throws. They're five of 12 from the free throw line. Let me total up Weaver's. Weaver at the half was four of five from the line. They are 16 of 21 as Weaver from the line. 16 of 21, they were four for five in the first half, three for four in the third. So nine free throws through three quarters for Weaver and 12 here in this fourth quarter for the Warriors. They've got one field goal. The favor, no, Triplet has a field goal. Everything else has been free throws for Weaver. Skyview, a couple of three-pointers. Jackson Schumann with a bucket and one free throw. Phipps with the ball. Working on Worrell. They look down low. The false of his foul will go to the line. Fouls on Reavers, number three, Hudson Shank. Getting his third. Shank's 5'9, false of 6'4. That is barbecue chicken. Down there in the paint. 44 seconds to play in this ball game. False of the hits. This is the seventh free throw in the fourth quarter for Skyview coming up. We've made some noise about Weber shooting 12 in the quarter. Well, this is seven now for Skyview. Coming in for Weber, replacing Matt. They shot seven all game long. Skyview by two, and Phipps with the board and the putback. Phipps' biggest bucket of the night, he's got nine. That gives Skyview a four point lead with under a minute to play. Lefebvre, three goes! Logan Lefebvre. <laughs> he's got nine. And it's a one point game again, Skyview. We'll have the ball with 31 seconds left. Timeout, Weber. Oh my goodness. Weber making it rain. Eight three-pointers on the night for the Warriors. Next up for Weber, they play Mountain Crest on the 3rd of January. Mountain Crest tonight was actually leading at halftime. They were leading Ogden 32 to 19. I don't have a final on that one. I do know that Logan lost. They lost to Manti 70 to 58 and Green Canyon continues their winning ways. A 71-65 win over Pineview. So the Valley doing pretty good. Ridgeline, I'm not sure if they play tonight, but Skyview next up for them. They play Madison, Idaho on the third. That one's up at uh, the Spectrum. That's one of those uh, double headers like they do with the football. They play Madison, Idaho, and I believe it's it's not Ridgeline. I think it's Logan that plays Preston up there. Also will go to the line. Well, Skink has to foul him, that's his fourth. Well, what about us on the Valley Channel? What's up next for us? The number three team in the entire state, number two in 6A, the American Fork Cavemen will rumble into Providence to take on Ridgeline on the fourth. We'll have that game for you, so a couple weeks off to our next game. Paulson hits the second. It's been an adventure, hits the first, I mean, it's been an adventure for Paulson at the line tonight. 
four of eight. He needs this one to make it a three-point Skyview lead. He's got 18 points. He's got 19 points. Also, just a junior. Skank's got four threes on the night. 19 seconds. Three-point lead. Oh, timeout as Skank fires the three. Jones calls the timeout. They whistle it before Skank can fire up that three. It was short anyway. Weaver's going to draw up a play. 57-54. Skyview and a fun one here tonight. 15.9 ticks on the clock. 14 turnovers for each team. Warrell will check in for Weber. I was talking about what's up next for the Valley Channel. We mentioned American Fork and Ridgeline on the 4th of January. Then we start region play. Our first region broadcast will be Mountain Crest and Logan, a couple of programs that are struggling out of the gates here early. Mountain Crest looking for their third win on the season tonight. They were leading Ogden at the half, and Logan lost earlier tonight. But it's a new slate when region starts. These early games are a time to tune everything up. Region. The region record's what gets you into the playoffs, top four teams. And I think region 12 is wide open. Skyview, obviously, when you've got Mason Falslip and Sam Phipps as a second option, it's gonna be tough to beat. Bear River, they're thumping Box Elder tonight. Three straight away, tied up! Falslip, plenty of time, six seconds. Five, false pull up, won't go, tip, won't go, we're going to overtime. Let's take a break, 57 apiece as we head to the extra period. You're watching the game of the week on the Valley Channel. In Utah, taking the lead is always greater than following. And being empowered is always greater than being restricted. That's the Mountain Star way too, where each one of us has the freedom to do what's right every time. Right for patients, right for their families. Mountain Star is more than a healthcare system. It's real care focused on your needs. Mountain Star, together we're greater. That's why I don't like gyms. Well, Megan, we're not a gym. We're Planet Fitness. No gym intimidation, no lunks, clean and spacious. Just $10 a month. We're not a gym, we're Planet Fitness. So, you bought your computer from one of those big box stores, or online, and now it's really slow. Or just not working right. Target acquired. PCs Unlimited can fix it. Fixing computers is what we do, and we've been doing it for over 20 years. Service. Repair, diagnostics, networking, upgrades, system and data recovery, all your computer needs. Our prices are low and our customer service is the best. You won't get help from the big box or online. Come see the professionals at PCs Unlimited. Over the period of time, my hearing became worse and worse. Over the course of the years, I developed a, a hearing loss, and I would not be able to hear my employees talk to me sometimes. For Paul Dings and Cash Valley's integrity, his character, his background, his equipment, I would recommend him to anyone for a hearing aid specialist. 
my goodness. Bonus time for you here on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel, 57 apiece. The Bobcats looked like maybe they were gonna put this thing away. And then Clinton Bennett hadn't hit a shot all night. He has one point. He gets free at the top of the key and drains it. Falslip had a look, he pulled up for three. You wonder if maybe if he thought about it again, if maybe he'd try to get to the rim, see if they could get to the line. They did something a little closer, they had a chance for a tap in, and now we're going to overtime. Phipps taps it to Horman. Ball won't go, and Falsam will go to the line. Now earlier, the guy on the, the PA said Falsam had four. I had him for three, and I'm looking at the big board. I think he may only have three fouls, Falsam. So that's good news for the Bobcats. They need him. Falsam hits, hits the first free throw. He's got 20. This is the second. You noticing a pattern here? Ball free in the paint. Somehow Weber controls. Shank falls down, rolls over top of the ball. The crowd wanted to travel. Weber retains possession, trailing 58-57 in the favor. Spins to his right, puts it up, misses. Rebound, Phipps. Falslip spins back inside. No look pass to right. Put it up. Miss it. Falslip's trying to drop dimes, but his teammate's not picking him up. Weaver basketball. Weaver ball as it goes out of bounds. And Wright knows it as he crosses midcourt. Falslip slaps him five, says next time Wright's not happy. Three minutes to play in the game. And one. For Skank as he gets to the line. And the bucket goes. Nine three-pointers in this ball game by Weber. That's kept them in it when they've been a little short-handed. Now in overtime with under three minutes left, they've got a two-point lead. Hudson Skank's got 21. Ball slip, triple team, throws it away. Skyview tries to get it back, but it goes out of bounds off the Bobcats. Ball slip drove in. They brought help. He tried to leave it off, but Weber did a good job of rotating on that weak side, and Ball slip had nowhere to go with it. He turns it over. Two point lead for the Wild or the Warriors. I'm thinking about Weber State Wildcats. Skank passes up a three. Now with the lead, they may not be in much of a hurry with Fever. Underneath, wide open is Bennett. Bennett's got six. It's a four point Warrior lead. Phipps. Down on the block is foul. Phipps will go to the line. It's his first trip there tonight. Phipps has got nine. Number 40, Bennett, his third. Bennett picks up his third foul. Four point lead for Weber. Huge free throws coming for Phipps. First one crawls over the rim. Fifty-nine, 62 60-62. 60-62. Skyview trails. They take a timeout. Weaver with the ball with 2.06 to play in overtime. Timeout, Skyview. It's just like Christmas. Nothing better than thinking all of the presents are open, and then you look in your stocking, and there's something in the toe. Or you notice a present 
around the other side of the tree. That's just like this game tonight. It's been a good one. And then we get four extra minutes. Twenty points for Mason Falslev. Again, he's the leading scorer in 4A, averages 24.1. Hudson Skank has 22 points. He averages just under 17 a game. Triplet with 17. For Skyview, Phipps has 11. Schumann has had a big night. He's got 15. Schumann not out on the floor. I didn't see him foul out, but they're going a little smaller, are the Bobcats. Nine three-pointers for the Weaver Warriors. And now a turnover. Skink with turnover number 15. Skyview with a chance to tie or take the lead with just under two minutes to play. Falsliff hangs, shoots, scores, we're tied up. Falsliff with three in the overtime, 22 on the night. He and the man with the ball, Hudson Skank, tied for game high honors. 62 apiece, 90 ticks on the clock. Skank out to Lefebvre. Lefebvre gets free baseline. Rotation of the ball ends up back in the hands of Bennett. Bennett had one point until the last few seconds of this game. And now he's got eight. Also leaves it underneath. Foul called as Malik Horman couldn't get the bucket to drop. He'll go to the line with a chance to tie it up. Bennett picks up his fourth. Horman at the line shooting two. Bennett had not hit a shot this entire game. And then with just a few, with seven seconds left, he hits the tying three as Horman leaves it short. He hits the tying three-pointer with seven seconds left in regulation. Now he scored four here in the overtime. Triplet, checking back in for Weaver. Triplet will replace Short. Horman missed the first, hits the second. Malik Horman with 10. Nielsen with a nice pass, missed down low. Rebound Skyview. Falsliff against three Warriors. It's swatted away, no foul as he ends up on the ground. Phipps fouls a three-point shooter. What a smart play by Skank. Skank saw Phipps coming at him. He starts into his three-point shooting motion and then stops and lets Phipps just jump right on top of him. Phipps with his fourth. And Skank with three free throws. He hits the first two. That gives Weaver a 66-63 lead. Now this one to make it a two possession game. Missed it. Falsa with the board. Three point ball game. Plenty of time, 40 seconds. Smith, three, tie! Sixty-six, sixty-six. Thirty-two seconds on the clock. Timeout, Skyview. 
as Cole Smith buries a three from the right corner to tie this ball game up. The officials are huddling up about something. I'm wondering if they may add some time. As Ryan Jones, the Weber coach, was pointing. He was pointing up at the scoreboard. Thirty-seven seconds, so they added five seconds. Five full seconds? That's a lot. Smith received that ball with about 40 seconds, and then he shot it immediately. So third, and then Skyview took the timeout, so 37 seconds. That tracks is about right. So lots of time for Weaver. Let's see if they just hold for the last shot or they take the first look that they've got. 24 points for Hudson Skank. His missed free throw. Left the door open for the tie. He was fouled on a three-pointer. He hit two of three. And that allowed Skyview to tie it. Weaver's going to play for the win. Ten seconds left. Skank working on Phipps. In the corner. Three on the way. Too hard. Ball out of bounds. Weaver has it with 2.9. It should be Skyview ball. I don't think anybody touched it after it went off the rim. And Skyview's all saying it's their ball. And the guys in stripes disagree. So Weaver... Still breathing with a chance to win. Skank, pull up, game! The Weaver Warriors come into Smithfield and shock the Bobcats with a walk-off game-winning shot by Hudson Skank, 24 on the night in overtime. Weber, 68-66. We hope you enjoyed the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next year. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cash Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Mountain Star Cash Valley Hospital. Together, we're greater. Cash Valley Electric, a tradition of excellence since 1915. New Smile Dental, experience dental care. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Lynn's Audio and Video, Cash Valley Specialists. Mountain Valley Heating and Air Conditioning, give us a call, you'll be glad you did. Herms Inn, last chance for great food. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons Apartments and Townhomes is your home. Planet Fitness of Logan, no intimidation and only 10 bucks a month. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cat Valley's TV station for over 25 years. starting to lose our hearing is it genetic is it environmental what what's happening to us there's many things genetics can take a part of it uh, and certain medications ototoxic drugs uh, but most of it's just life living living in general we go to a concert here we go to a, a motorcycle rally we ride a motorcycle we're exposed to all these loud sounds loud music but it all takes a little bit of hearing 
a little bit here, a little bit there. We don't notice it. It's so slowly happening and it's painless and over time just that little bit compounds and pretty soon we have a significant hearing loss that's yeah. affecting our ability to communicate with our loved ones. Right and the only way you may notice that is if your wife says something to you and you're saying what 42 times a day which of course I have no experience of that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> your wife or you, or you have the TV turned up yeah. too loud always repeating asking people to repeat just not sure what they're saying. Yeah. You hear them but you don't understand. Right. I have that trouble too in a, in a full room of people. I can't pick out one conversation anymore. That yeah. comes from uh, most likely a high frequency hearing loss. Yeah, see I'm getting old. <laughs> but it doesn't even apply to just old people, does it? Or older. It can certainly be people who are younger. I mean you have young patients too, don't you? Yes, about one in four, the latest studies I read, one in four teenagers has hearing loss due to exposure to noise. Oh, well, yes. I mean, we could go on about that, but we can see it because we, we've all had the experience of teenagers listening to music through some kind of device, and they've got their earbuds in, and you say something to them, and they pull it out, one of them, and you can hear their music, you know, two blocks away down the street, and you just think, you're going to be deaf. <laughs> yes. With an iPad and an Apple product with the volume turned up all the way, you have about 10 minutes of listening time before you actually start creating hearing loss. Really? Yes. Wow, so that's significant, wow. About 70% of the volume, you can go about eight hours, okay. so in a day's time. So if you're listening to those things, turn them down. Put a limit on them at about 70% of the maximum volume. Wow, well that's really interesting because I didn't realize it would be that brutal and that quickly. So kids that are listening to this every day, day in and day out, I mean, they're, we're laughing, but seriously, it could be a real problem. It can. It can affect their whole life, their career choices. Uh, everything in their life can be affected by the not, not being able to hear. Wow. Okay, so very simply, turn the music down. But aside from that, um, if you are experiencing any kind of problem, be you my age or be you younger, why don't you give Dr. Danes uh, a call here at Cache Valley Hearing. Tell us where we are, Dr. Danes, and how they can get hold of you. We're at 485 North Main Street in Logan, uh, and you can just give us a call at 435-753-4327 or at 753-H-E-A-R here. That's a good, <laughs> that's very apt. Yeah, I should say so. Uh, any kind of hearing loss, and literally, please don't let this um, feeling of embarrassment or it not being manly or cool, that's, you know, that's a bit dim. Y you shouldn't be embarrassed about something that is a natural aging process. It's actually more noticeable when you don't hear and have to have that's people true. repeat themselves. That's true. Extremely irritating for those around you that are having to repeat it time and time again. Thanks so much, Dr. Danes. And seriously, guys, give Dr. Danes a call. Your hearing problems will be solved. Thanks, Dr. Danes. Today Where is the beef? means something different. Some use beef frozen from far away. But Wendy's believes the juiciest hamburgers are made from fresh beef, raised right here. Land of the beef, home of the deliciously different Dave's Double.